Thursday, March 15. This week, several kids turned up with lunchboxes with burglar alarms. You know that song about hills ringing with the sound of music? We well, might say our cafeteria rang with the sound of burglar alarms. The fad didn't last very long, and after a while, it didn't even bother. I didn't even bother to set my alarm. Nobody has robbed my lunchbox since I set it off that day. I never did find out who the thief was, and now that I stopped to think about it, I'm glad. If he had set the alarm, set off the alarm when my lunchbox was in the classroom, he would have been in trouble. <laughs> Big trouble. Maybe it was just somebody whose mother packed bad lunches. Jelly sandwiches on white bread that tastes like Kleenex, or maybe he had to pack his own lunches and there was never anything good in the house to put in them. I've seen people look in their lunches, take out the cookies, and throw the rest in the garbage. Mr. Fridley always looks worried when they do this. I'm not saying robbing lunchboxes is right. I am saying I'm glad I don't know who the thief was because I have to go to school with them. Friday, March 16. Tonight I was staring at a piece of paper trying to think of something to write for young writers when the phone rang. Mom told me an answer because she was washing her hair. It was Dad. My stomach felt as if it was dropping to the floor, the way it always does when I hear his voice. How are you doing, kid? He asked. Fine, I said, thinking of the success of my burger alarm. Burglar. <laughs> burglar alarm. Great. I got your letter, he said. That's good, I said. His call took me so by surprise that I could feel my heart pounding, and I couldn't think of anything to say until I asked, Have you found another dog to take Bandit's place? I think what I really meant was, Have you found another boy to take my place? No, but I asked about him on my CB, Dad told me. He may turn up yet. I hope so. This conversation was going no place. I really didn't know what to say to my father. It was embarrassing. Then Dad surprised me. He asked, You ever miss your old dad? I had to think a minute. I missed him all right, but I couldn't seem to get the words out. My silence must have bothered him because he asked, Are you still there? Sure, Dad. I miss you. I told him. <coughs> it was true, but not as true as it had been a couple of months ago. I still wanted him to pull up in front of the house in his big rig, but now I knew he couldn't count on it. Sorry I don't get over your way more often, he said. I hear the sugar refinery in Spreckles is closing down. I read about it in the paper, I said. Is your mother handy? he asked. I'll see, I said, even though by then she was standing by the phone with her hair wrapped in a towel. She shook her head. She didn't want to talk to Dad. She's washing her hair, I said. Tell her I'll manage to send your support check sometime next week, he said. So long, kid. Keep your nose clean. So long, Dad, I answered. Drive carefully. I guess he'll never learn that my name is Lee and that my nose is clean. Maybe he thinks I'll never learn that he drives carefully. He doesn't really. He's a good driver, but he speeds to make time whenever he can to avoid the highway patrol. All truckers do. After that, I couldn't back, get back to thinking about young writers, so I picked up Ways to Amuse a Dog and read it for the thousandth time. I read harder books now, but I still feel good when I read that book. I wonder where Mr. Henshaw is. Saturday, March 17. Today's Saturday, so this morning I walked to the butterfly trees again. The grove was quiet and peaceful, and because the sun was shining, I stood there a long time looking at the orange butterflies floating through the gray and green leaves and listening to the sound of the oceans on the rocks. There aren't as many butterflies now. Maybe they're starting to go north for the summer. I thought I might write about them in prose instead of poetry, but on the way home I got to thinking about Dad, and one time when he took me along when he was hauling grapes to a winery, and what a great day it had been. Tuesday, March 20. Yesterday, Miss Neely, the librarian, asked if I had written anything for the Young Writer's Yearbook. It was all writing had to be turned in by tomorrow. When I told her I hadn't, she said, I still had 24 hours, and why didn't I get busy? So I did, because I really would like to meet a famous author. My story about the 10-foot wax man went into the wastebasket. Next, I tried to start a story called The Great Lunchbox Mystery, but I couldn't seem to turn my lunchbox experience into a story because I don't know who the thieves thieves was and were, and I don't want to know. Finally, I dashed off a description of the time I rode with my father when he was trucking the load of grapes down Highway 152 through Pacheco Pass to a winery. I put in things like the signs that said, steep grade, trucks use low gear, 
and how Dad downshifted and how skillful he was in handling a long, heavy load on the curves. I put in about the hawks on the telephone wires and about that high peak where Black Bart's lookout used to watch for travelers coming through the pass so he could signal to Black Bart to rob them and how the leaves on the trees along the stream at the bottom of the pass were turning yellow and how good tons of grapes smelled in the sun. I left out the part about the waitress and the video games. And then I copied the whole thing over in case neatness counts and gave it to Miss Neely. Saturday, March 24. Mom said I had to invite Barry over to our house for supper because I've been going over to his house after school so often. We'd been working on a burglar alarm for his room, when which we finally got to work with some help from a library book. I wasn't sure Barry would like to come into our house, which is so small compared to his, but he accepted when I invited him. Mom cooked a casserole full of good things like ground beef, chilies, tortillas, tomato, tomatoes, and cheese. Barry said he really liked eating at our house because he got tired of eating with a bunch of little sisters, waving spoons, and drumsticks. That makes me that made me happy. It helps to have a friend. Barry said his burglar alarm still works. The trouble is, his little sisters think it's fun to open his door and set it off. Then they giggle and hide. <laughs> this was driving his mother crazy, so he finally had to disconnect it. We all laughed about this. Barry and I felt good about making something that worked, even if you can't use it. Barry saw the sign on my door that said, Keep out, Mom, that means you. He asked if my mom really stays out of my room. And I said, Sure, if I keep things picked up. Mom is not a snoop. Barry said he wished he could have a room nobody ever went into. I was glad Barry didn't ask to use the bathroom. Maybe I'll start scrubbing off the mildew after all. Sunday, March 25. I keep thinking about Dad and how lonely he sounded. I'm wondering what happened to the pizza boy. I don't like to think about Dad being lonesome. But I don't like, I don't like to think about the pizza boy cheering him up either. Tonight at supper, Beans and Franks, I got up my courage to ask Mom if she thought Dad would get married again. She thought a while and said, then said, I don't see how he can afford to. He has big payments to make on the truck. The price of diesel oil goes up all the time. And when people can't afford to build houses or buy cars, he won't be hauling lumber or cars. I thought this over. I know that a license for a truck costs, like his costs over $1,000 a year. But he always sends my support payments, I said, even if he is late sometime. Yes, he does that, agreed my mother. Your father isn't a bad man, by any means. Suddenly, I was mad and disgusted with the whole thing. Why don't you two get married again? I guess, it was, I guess I wasn't very nice about the way I said it. Mom looked me straight in the eye. Because her father will never grow up, she said. I knew that was all she would ever say about it. Tomorrow, they give out the Young Writer's Yearbook. Maybe I'll be lucky and get to have lunch with, with the famous author. Today, oh, Monday, March 26. Today wasn't the greatest day of my life. When our class went to the library, I saw a stack of yearbooks and could hardly wait for Miss Neely to hand them out. When I finally got mine and opened it to the first page, it was a monster story, and I saw I hadn't won first prize. I kept turning. I didn't win second prize, which went to a poem, and I didn't win third or fourth prize either. Then I turned another page and saw Honorable Mention, and under it, A Day on Dad's Rig by Lee M. Botts. There was my title, with my name under it, in print, even if it was mimeographed print. I can't say I wasn't disappointed because I hadn't won a prize. I was. I was really disappointed about not getting to meet the mysterious, famous author, but I like seeing my name in print. Some kids were mad because they didn't win or even get something printed. They said they wouldn't ever try to write again, which I think is pretty dumb. I've heard that real authors sometimes have their books turned down. I figure you win some, you lose some. Then Miss Neely announced that the famous author, famous author the winners would get to have lunch with was Angela Badger. The girls were more excited than the boys because Angela Badger writes mostly about girls with problems like big feet or pimples or something. I would still like to meet her because she is, as they say, a real live author. And I've never met a real live author. I'm glad Mr. Henshaw isn't the author because then I would really be disappointed that I didn't get to meet him.